All right, today we're going to talk about guarding objects and guarding people. Today, we're going to look at guard the objects and guarding people and go over a little bit of the link between the two on how we teach it, the mentality behind guarding things, objects or people, because they're tied together on how the dog has to think about these things. So when teaching dogs to guard objects, and here I'll show you many objects. And this was all done in my trainer's academy that I'm doing right now. Where I have people here that I'm teaching to be trainers. These are their dogs. And this is the first three weeks of our trainer's camp. We have a few more months, but we got all this done already within the first two to three weeks. So when being taught to guard an object, we have platform behavior, <laughs> right, touch pad, it's how we start these things, and then transfer it to holding on the object, but also teaching a bark and hold while on the object. <laughs> Right, the bark and hold is barking at people without biting unless there's a movement or a gesture in to go after the dog in a traditional bark and hold or somebody flees. So in this particular case, because it's an object, anybody who gets very close, it's the reaching right to try to get the object that we are teaching that the dog must cut it off hit immediately and not allow anybody to go and grab the object okay so there's a lot of restraint it's timing the dog knowing that it's the reach-in, not just closeness to the object, moving. So it's teaching a lot of self-control and not to leave the object or leave the object alone, okay? With all it has, it has to guard that object. So as a whole, it's teaching them to get on the objects, no matter what object. It's an implied stay on it, hold it, don't come off it, okay? Or if it's another object that's too small to get on, stay with it. If it moves, you move with it and you follow it, not to let it be picked up or taken. So we have many aspects to this. So. Touching objects, getting on the object, holding a stay on the object, 
showing aggression on the object, but not biting unless the exact gesture. So this takes a lot of self-control from the dog to do this well. At the same time, as somebody moves around the object in different ways, the dogs have to be aware and stay focused on the person who's trying to come in and possibly take the object, okay? So you'll see here, that's why the dogs spin on the objects and stay facing forward because at any second, the attack and the grab could come. Guard. So, they have to be very hyper alert, extremely aware, they can't fade away mentally on this. So, you see them very vigilant about being aware every second and staying on the object at all positions to make sure that whoever's going around it will not be able to come in and reach for that object. Now, this is unlike sport, guard the object where in Mondio it's a forward movement towards the dog even from three feet out and the dog could just fly off and go hit the person from three, five feet away, right? Makes no sense for real life, okay? When you have a, a KMPV guard the object, it just stays there flat, the dog stays in one position doesn't have to move around the object and guard it, right? Which makes things way more complicated. So it's just one entry from the decoy coming in. The dog knows it's gonna be that entry when he walks towards it, the dog strikes. So in my guard the object, there's more complexity, right, than that. And again, in the Mondio one, Mondio ring or any of the ring sports, it just doesn't make sense for real life, right? It doesn't apply to real life. So anybody, if I, for in real life, if I tell somebody to, you know, my dog to guard the object, doesn't mean he has to bark at anybody. He just has to hold down on it and just make sure nobody reaches to grab it, right? So for real life, we're playing a safety game with this too, right? that it has to be an extreme move of somebody really trying to grab the object, right? Or coming in at the dog. So, if people are walking by the object in real life and they got too close, they don't get bitten, right? But in the sports, you get that close, you're gonna get nailed or any gesture in towards it, like in Mondio or the ring sports, the dog is just gonna get at it and usually feed away. So most people couldn't be walking around if they make a mistake and head towards the object from three to five feet and they didn't even see the object or the dog there. And they were just cruising around, went like this towards it, bam, they're gonna get hit. Like, and the person would be like, what the, just hit me. What was that, right? They weren't even aware <laughs> that there was an object, a dog on top of something, guarding it, laying on it. So it doesn't have any real sense for reality. It's dangerous, right? So we just want them to lay there, cover, surround it, and wait for the reach and or the gesture. So here we just start with a regular step stool that the dog is going to guard. guard. <laughs> we transfer here to a little box, right? A little cardboard box.
and watch how when the box moves around from her changing position to try to keep her eye on the guy, she's moving the box from her movements to try to cover the angles, but watch how she follows the box. Wherever it goes and she kicked it, she goes to it, grabs onto it, and knows for no reason, even though it got kicked away, she must travel with it, go get it, and hover on it, and not let that box out of her body and sight. Right? That's her job, and you can see her how well, I mean, it was beautiful. Right? How she kicked it and went, held it, got it. I mean, so they're amazing, right, that she understood her obligation to that box and to guard it when she was told. So when she kicked it around, moved it, she was going to get it, find it, block the angles off. Anytime she moved it, she would just hover with it and make sure that she did her job and her obligation to what she was told to guard that object that there's a complete comprehension of what she is supposed to be doing her task so when we tell you to go to the box and guard it you she goes to it she gets it, the box is very difficult because she can't really lay on it. It's a tiny little thing here, so she's got to hover on it. And then when it moves, she completely understood that this is all about the box and holding on to it and guarding it for her life not to let anybody take it. So, I mean, and she just learned this a week ago. Amazing, brilliant. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't even explain. It's not like she's been doing this a long time. It was just a week of this. And never has guarded that box before, which is even more amazing. It was the first time the owner put that box out there. She has no idea what the box is. She's never done that before and guarded this type of object. So on the first time to just go and hover on it, kick it around, go grab it, gave us the understanding that we really taught her well and she completely understands her mission with this thing incredible so then here put a duffel bag first time we've done this right here as you're going to see it the box was the first time now Michael's going to put a duffel bag out there that they've never been on or guarded to see how they do with the new object, another new object as well. Rebel. Guard! Good. Good, Rebel, good. For first time from the backpack, mix it up. And phenomenal uh, again first time guarding that bag doesn't know what it is <laughs> right much easier for her because she can get her body on it and hover on it and cling to it so there's more identity but first time ever doing it phenomenal right so we have the step stool first hovering on it completely never coming off it then the little box never saw that before duffel bag has never seen that before now michael's going to throw something at her 
and he's going to put a long cardboard box. And again, she's never seen this box either. First time ever doing it. And the test was to see with that length and skinniness, how well would she hold something? Because that's very difficult for a dog to understand that they have to cover the whole length of it, no matter what, and stay on that little width. So, here we go. Good. Come to the other end, check that out, I can't get to it. Go to this end. Go, 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 go. Again unbelievable right she knew to make sure that that whole box was covered has never seen that type of box before knew that that whole box where the box was completely up and down body awareness box awareness staying on it hovering around it not letting Michael in and once the reach, the bite, I mean, phenomenal. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, right? And these are brand new objects, these last three, that they've never seen. And they just started guard the object a week ago. I mean, I mean, it's just amazing. Now here to show you something. Michael gives her a big box, right? A bigger box. And it was very difficult for her to get on, hold on to. And you'll see her here when she gets it, she starts kicking it and it starts moving all over the yard. But watch how when she kept moving it all over the place, she kept following it throughout the yard. And on video, we'll lose her sight of her with the box for a little bit but Michael will extend out and she's not there because she's behind the camera staying with the box right I mean so again showing her sense of comprehension to the task and showing obligation to not let that box out of her sight no matter where it goes and stay with it all the way through the yard if she has to. And it went way off camera and she still stayed with it. <laughs> so, here's that. Go. Let me show you where it was. All the way here. And she stayed with it as it moved. That was incredible. All right. I mean, it's brilliant, right? So, it, I mean, it's just phenomenal. The box kicking everywhere all the way across the yard and she just goes and she just understands to stay with it, keep a hold of it. Michael stretches himself back off into the yard away from her, showing that he came out, but she's not coming with him. She's still back there because she's with the box. That's why she hasn't traveled out there in the yard with him. She disappeared. So, I mean, it's just phenomenal.
Now, the same applies, right? The same concepts that guard the object is guard the people as well. It's the same concept in the dog's mind. So, for example, here, you're going to see Michael hit the floor. He's going to be balled up on the floor. And I'm going to try to attack him and get around to see if they'll give me an opening and have a mental lapse that I could come in and grab Michael. Now it's the same concept. Hover on a board, hover on a bag. Now they're going to go to him. The only difference is now they're going to have to guard the outside barrier of him and not lay on top of him. So now they have to hold the body, right? The feel of the body, not on top of the body. Tiny little difference in the concept, but it's the same theory. So here, you see I'm going to try to attack Michael while he's on the floor and try to get in there. And of course, impossible, right? They had me shielded off around him. There was no way they were going to let me in there and, and put their guard down. And it's hard to see on camera. But I made it a tiny little turn when I was going around of a gesture just to turn my body in a little bit because I was going to attack him. And they were so on to that little tiny turn in that I did to come in to make the attack and they cut me off way before I could even get close because they were on, they knew with that little sudden gesture from that distance that I was coming. And they flew and cut me off. And hit me, would not let me get that close. So I mean, it's perfect. Same concept. If Michael's standing up, then laying down, it's holding body and circling and guarding right? Guarding behavior. Now it's just the touch and feel of the, the body and not on top of something. Okay, and then now we make things much more difficult. Now we have a moving guard, right? So now Michael's going to move backwards, move around, the decoy's going to chase, and the dogs have to move and make sure they know where he is all the time to make sure he doesn't get touched, attacked. Okay, so now things get much more complicated than just guard a stationary object. Same obligations, stay on, make sure wherever the body goes, just like the box, that wherever the body goes, they must attach to it and follow it anywhere, no matter what. No matter which way Michael goes, sideways, backwards, stay still, that they travel with that body and find it at all times, staying with it not to let any gaps happen, any lapses or lose his body because then they would not be able to defend him if they lose him. Now, follow him, follow him, follow him, follow him.
Tap the stick. Tap the stick. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Hold on. Just move it a little bit. Move in, Aaron. Move in. Hustle. Yeah. Now. Go, Mike. Back. Close in there a little bit. Close in. Close in. Close in. Keep going. Close the gap a little more. And then ready? Go. Hustle. Move, Aaron. Move. Move. Quicker. Aaron. Right? So it's their job obligation to make sure that Michael does not get away from them guarding him. Much harder, much harder than guarding a stationary object, right? This is like the box moving around and them kicking it and them going to find it and grab onto it. It's the same concept, just at a much more complex level, right? When you have a body going moving faster and sideways and all over to try to escape a decoy, it's much harder than a box just skipping around a little bit, finding it, skip around finding it. Still very complicated, right? For a dog to understand that, that if the box moves, you just go grab it and you, no matter what. Now to have a body moving so fast and they're focused on a decoy that's moving. So trying to hold the legs, stay with those moving legs no matter what, while trying to stay focused on the decoy where they go. And it's an aggressive state that they're in too at the decoy. There's a lot going on for the dogs. Very complex, very complicated. So this is much higher level than just guarding objects. And they did phenomenal with all these things. And we're working on more pieces to the guarding. And I'll show a video of that in a week or so of much more complex exercises that were in right now teaching them and it's just amazing and we'll show all the variations that we're doing to guarding now the owner adding much more difficulty to guard so that'll be coming next week or so but that's guard the object and people and yeah this is my school that these are students of mine in my train, the Dog Trainer Academy. And this is what you learn. Just little pieces of what you learn when you come into my academies. So I'm Richard Hines. I'll see you next time. Rebel, retire. Hustle! <laughs> Yeah, much Is that better? better? Yeah.